Welcome to the class today. Today we're going to paint this beautiful sunset with a boat. So we'll start off with a nice big hardware brush. The paints that I've got on the palette is titanium white, cerulean blue, cadmium yellow and alizarin crimson. So I'm starting off with titanium white, just a tiny touch of yellow in it. So I've picked up some water on the brush and I've worked it in just so that the paint can flow a little bit easier off the brush. And as you can see, it's the sky is quite diagonal, so I'm, I'm putting it in in a diagonal direction. All right, moving lower down towards the horizon, I'm going to take some little bit more cadmium yellow into that white mix and add that in its place. And then I'm going to take some little bit of crimson into that to create a low intense orange. And I'm going to put that in the places. So you have to be careful with the orange when you're doing skies and sunsets. You don't want it too intense. Make sure it's nice and low intensity. Okay, moving even closer to the horizon. I'm adding even more crimson to get a low intense pink. Now, all I'm going to do is just, once I've got those colors in their places, I'm just going to blend them into each other. The sky itself is always really smooth shadings. So you just keep going crisscrosses and gradually up from the pink into the orange, into the yellow, into the white, and then all the way back down again. White, yellow, pink, and orange until you get a nice smooth shading. So stand back and then you see whether you can see any lines. If you can, you need to blend it some more. All right, moving further up, it's a little bit bluer. So I've made sure that I've ended off by the white side. And that way I can just pick up a little bit of the cerulean, blend it into the white and add it into that top corner over there. So I'll take this blue and I'll blend it into the white area, but never further down than that, because otherwise you're going to start picking up some yellows and then you're going to end up with a green in the sky. And we don't want a green sky. Great, I've dried that off and I'm just using some masking tape and I'm masking off the, the water line because I want to block the water in just with a basic color. So what I'm going to do is just take the pink from the sky. And you can see we're just mixing a little bit extra there. So I'm going to take that pink from the sky and just give the water a very basic block in. There's no shadings, no nothing. All I'm trying to do is just put in a base coat down for when we do get to the water, then at least we've got some reflecting color and not just white of the canvas. All right, so I'm taking off my masking tape and I've dried off that watercolor as well, just so that I don't have to walk over any wet paint. All righty, so for the clouds, just adding a bit more cerulean into the white. And now to get the cloud effect, I'm gonna use little circular motion so you can see that the clouds are quite fluffy and puffy and spotty and dotty today. So just using this little circular motion roughly to the same size as what I'm seeing it in the clouds is automatically going to give you that effect. So at some places your cloud is more dense, so then you're going to go over those places a bit more often. And then to get the more broken, faded little bits, you make sure that when you see there's, there's less paint on the brush, as that paint starts getting less on the brush, then you use that to put the little fluffier, more transparent clouds in. And I'll just continue like that and I'll, I'll use the shape of the clouds as a good guide to give me roughly the something similar on my canvas. But I'm not going to try and copy it exact. All right, so now I'm just going to add some more pinky colors as we come here closer to where the sun is. At the moment, there where my hand is, is roughly where the sun is going to be. So as you get closer to that sun, now you're getting those warmer uh, tonal values. 
So I'll just get a little bit of the pinks into this edge of the clouds over here. And then moving down to the horizon, there's also a lot more pinks. But because that's further away, we need to take care of atmospheric and aerial perspective. So what I've done is I'm here, I'm just using more of a stripe action as opposed to little circular motions. Way down there on the right hand side, there's some blue clouds just out on the horizon. So I'll just wiggle and squiggle those guys in. Using less painted places, a little bit more painted places to get some depth and dimension into those clouds so that they darker and lighter. All right, and then those blue clouds moving towards the left hand side, gradually becoming a little bit more purple. So I've just taken a little bit of crimson into that blue, just to purple it up a little bit. Great, let's start getting some of the white clouds in that are right here by the sun. So I'm literally just using neat titanium white over here. There is where we're going to put our sun in. So I'm just going to add a quick layer. White is, loves to, even though it's supposed to be an opaque color, it loves to go transparent when it uh, dries. So I'll put one layer down, and then later on, then I can come back in and just solidify that white a little bit more. And then the yellow that's underneath won't shine through. Great. Now let's just add a little bit more depth and dimension into these solid bits of the cloud. So I've just taken a little bit more cerulean into that cloud mix. And just inside the cloud, I'm adding, using the same circular motion, adding sort of clouds on top of clouds. And that will thicken them up. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. Great, now let's do that distant shoreline. We're gonna simplify that quite a bit. So I'm going to use a soft full bit. It's about a three quarters of an inch. So I've taken cerulean blue. Cadmium yellow and a little bit of Payne's grey just to dull down the color and break the vibrancy of the blue and the yellow. So initially I'm just going to block that distant headlands in over there. So I'm not trying to get any shadings or anything. What I did do is just a little bit lighter towards the right hand side because it is receding into the distance over there. All right, now I've just masked off the, the top of the water just so that I can come all the way down to the water's edge and I know it's going to give me a nice sharp line. Alrighty, now we need to get a little bit of detail into this headland over here. So we'll start off just by getting some trees. I'm adding some yellow into that initial green just to get it a bit more vibrant and, and sunlit. And I'm just using dabs and taps, I'm not trying to create an individual tree effects, just little areas of brighter and darker colors. Now there's also buildings and stuff in the distance. So I've taken some of my Payne's Gray, added some cerulean into that, along with some white. And I'm just going to add little horizontal and vertical short little lines. All it's doing is just creating little bits of 
texture. You won't see individual buildings and stuff. It's too far in the distance and we don't want to get too much detail into the distance because it, it draws your attention away from the, the focal point, which in this case is the boat. Great, so now I'm going to just add some even darker little shadowy bits and you can see most of them are like horizontal lines and a few little vertical dabs and dashes as well. And it's literally just dabs and dashes. You'll see when this whole area is done, it creates a nice impression of buildings into the distance. Right, so now I've gone over to a fine round brush and I've just essentially added some more white and blue into that grey that we mixed. And I'm just adding more little horizontal and vertical strokes. These ones though are making a little bit shorter and that'll suggest details. You can really start to imagine that there's some buildings into the distance and the same thing for some boats yeah right here on the shoreline i'll just put a few little lines in to suggest their holes and that's more than enough that's all we need for that okay so now i'm going to take that brighter tree color i'm adding more yellow to it and i'm just going to add a few little dabs and dashes to suggest some trees here in between all the buildings and it's just a few taps don't overdo it don't try and paint individual buildings Now I'm going to go over to a really small fine liner and just some neat cadmium yellow, possibly with just a little bit of white in it if it's not showing up enough. Because it's sunset, people have started putting on their lights. So I'm going to add just a few little bright dots here along the shoreline and a few in between the buildings to suggest that there are uh, a few lights on already. That'll just add a little bit of sparkle in that area. Great, you can dry that off so that you don't uh, smudge that by accident. Now we can go ahead and start painting the water. So I'm taking cadmium yellow, crimson and titanium white just to mix up a little bit more of that orange from the sky color. And I'm using a soft full bit. And I'm just adding a series of random horizontal lines. Some thicker, some thinner. Try and get them thinner towards the water's edge and then you can gradually make them a little bit broader as you come here closer towards the bottom of the canvas. Now I'm going to do the same with the yellow from the sky. In other words, we're reflecting the sky colors in the water. There's some of the blue from the clouds, the light cloud color. So what I do do is I take the orange and I overlap the yellow. Take the yellow, overlap the orange. Take the yellow, overlap the blue. Take the blue, overlap the, the yellow. You get the point. Each of these colors are overlapping each other. I've also now added a little bit more of the darker blue just in this bottom right hand corner really because that, that's where the clouds are. And then I've just added a few little squiggles in a vertical line just to suggest that there's something that's reflecting in the water. Maybe it's a, a boat or something. And I've done the same with the green from the, the headlands. Just 
a few little wiggles and squiggles just to suggest that some of those colors are reflecting in the water as well. Great, so now I've taken some Payne's Grey, add a little bit of yellow into it just to green it up ever so slightly. And that way it'll look like you can see through the water in those shadows. And I'm just with the same wiggly squiggly motion adding in the reflection for the boat. On the boat reflection on the right hand side, I am just making it slightly lighter just by adding a little bit more white into the mix. And in the central area, a little bit darker by using plain Payne's Grey. Then if you take a look on the photograph, you'll see there's quite a bit of the, the cloud blue color reflecting inside that little no man's land between the, the shadow and the sunlit portion of the water. So I've just added that in with wiggles and squiggles, as well as a darker shadow there for the, the buoy that's hanging off the side of the boat. So for the buoy, I've literally just taken some of the the darker sky color, blocked that in, and edged the bottom off with some Payne's Gray, wiggled and squiggled some Payne's Gray and some sky color to create a reflection in the water. And I'll leave that to dry before we add in the highlights. So now we can start blocking in the boat. So for the boat, I've taken the Payne's Grey and added some cerulean into it and a bit of white. Just to mix up a, a bluey grey. Now blocking in the one side of the boat, adding some more white into the mix and then blocking in the other side. Just to create a contrast between the two sides. And you'll see I leave a nice sharp line there where the two sides meet. And those sharp line, that found line there, shows you that you've got an edge or a corner between the two. The bottom is again just blocked in using neat Payne's Grey. And on the right hand side I did add just a tiny amount of white but not much into it just to create a small contrast between the two sides. And then just with whatever paint was left on the brush, I just married up the little gap there between the bottom of the boat and the water so that you can't see where the boat starts and the water ends. Great. The buoy is dry now, so I've taken some of the yellow from the sky color. And I'm just adding a quick little shading from the left hand edge towards the right. And then I did eventually come back in with a little bit of neat white just for a final highlight, just on the very left hand edge, just to get that sun really glinting off that buoy over there. So the buoy does have a bit of uh, rust on it. So I've taken the bit of blue, bit of yellow, bit of red, and I've mixed them all together just to form a, a really ugly brown. And just with a few dabs and dashes, added in a suggestion of some rust. Great, back to the boat. So over here, I've taken a little bit more of the Payne's Grey into our boat mix, just to darken it up. And I've added a quick little shading on this front little edge over here. I saw that on the photo, so it's got to go in. Right, now we're gonna add a reflection onto the boat. So that reflection is sky color. So I've used the pink from the sky color. Right at the left hand edge is at its brightest. And then as the boat curls away from the light, it gradually goes darker. So I'm just creating myself a quick little shading. What is important in this area is the buoy that's hanging off the side is casting a shadow onto the hull of the boat. So what I'm doing is I'm avoiding that little area where that shadow is being cast. So that shadow will sort of form himself by you not painting in that area there. 
So you'll see that I'm being careful to add little random cast shadows into the side of the boat as well, just to try and indicate that there are other things also reflecting in the boat. And as I do, I'm fading that color out towards the right hand side so that it gets lighter and lighter or in essence darker and darker and I'm also avoiding the little area where that cast shadow from the buoy is. I then also went ahead and blocked in the buoy using the whole color so that he can dry so long. So I'm going to take now that same pink color and I'm going to add it into this top part of the boat. So this side of here is also gradually curling away from the light. So initially it starts off with the pink of the sky color. You can see it's literally the same as the sky color above it. But then as I move across I'm now gradually adding more and more of the boat blue color into that pink. And that way I'm forming shading across that whole width of the side. Then to show that there's a change in angle from the one side of the boat to the front of the boat, I'm going to use then just some neat um, blue, original blue boat color. And I'm going to block in that top side edge. And instantly you can see you've got a corner. I did notice that the corner wasn't perfectly sharp, so I've added a very quick shading and that just rounds off that corner over there. Great, now I'm going to go over to my rigger brush and I'm going to use just a lighter blue, essentially the same blue as what was used on the right hand side of the hull and then add a line all the way along the left hand edge then I'm going to use the left hand side of the hull's color and put a line down the right hand edge. Then take your cloud color and create a little quick shading inside the window and that'll make it look like that window is shiny. And then I just edge that off with some of the hull color. The same next to it, there's a little blue window, it did the same there. Great, now we can uh, start adding a little bit more sparkle into the water. So I'm taking the yellow from the sky color and a little fine liner and I'm being very patient and I'm gradually adding little dots. So in this main area where I'm adding it now is where the sun is reflecting. So you're going to add lots of dots over here and then towards the left and towards the right less and less. So these little sparkles that you get on the water, they're going to sparkle on the top crest of each little ripple. So you're going to add these little dots on the tops of those crests. So as you come down, it's closer to you. So these little sparkles are bigger and bigger. So you'll see I'm gradually making them more little horizontal lines again. And then just for the last little bit of sparkle in the sky, I did add just a little, essentially a vertical series of, of dots, the same dots and dabs and dashes, but using neat white. Great, let's go and paint the mast. So I'm just going to use the, the hull color and a soft full bit. So I did use two pieces of masking tape to create myself a, a parallel line and that's why I don't have to worry about trying to get perfectly straight lines because that's not particularly easy. So I blocked that in and I dried it off and now I've taken the, the lighter, the right hand hole color and I'm just using that and putting it on the left hand side of that mast and just very quickly creating a little blending so that the mast can be round. Then I removed the masking tape very gently so that I don't lift up any other paint underneath. 
Great, let's start adding some of the, the finer details onto the boat. So I'm going to add railings. Just using a rigger brush, make sure your paint is nice and thin so that it can flow off the brush. And just copy some of those little finer details that you see. I'll do the same with the rope. So I put down one line and then just twisted the other one around it. The most difficult part of this painting is probably the rigging. You have to make sure that you get nice straight lines. So to do that, I use my wrist and that gives you a, a straighter line than trying to paint using your arm. So just use your wrist and your fingers. And get them as straight as what you can. So I did not add in a few of those. And then the sail that's rolled up on the boom. Then I've taken the same color and just run a little line underneath on the side of the boat. That just lifts up that little edge and makes it look 3D. Then I've taken the sky color, the yellow, and just added a few little reflected highlights off a few places. Whatever I felt was pointing towards the light, I've reflected that. Then on the rope, just to give it a bit of a rope effect, on this left hand one, because he could pick up a little bit of light, I just added a few little rounded marks on it to suggest it. Great, let's go and paint the rolled up sail. So I've taken just some blue, yellow and red to create a, a brownie kind of a color. And I'm just going to suggest some details. It's really dark. There's not much sun on this area of here. So I'm just adding a few little lines just to suggest. Here seems to be just a little bit of a piece of sail or something. I don't know if this is the spinnaker or what it is, but there was a little bit of white sticking out there. So I just added those few little dabs and dashes didn't try to get any detail it was just suggestions of detail that's good enough cool i added a little bit more yellow into this brown color for the main sail and you can see i'm just using a, a bowed brush stroke to suggest that it's sort of rolled up and and folded then I lightened that ever so slightly with a bit more white into the mix and I just highlighted those little bows more towards the top. And that was enough to create that bunched up sail effect. Fabulous. Now let's go back to the sun. I've given it another coat, and now we're going to start adding just a few little sun flares coming off of that sun. And that will give us a bit more of an atmospheric effect in the painting. So when you do this, bring them absolutely vertical. And then 30 degrees off of each of that. So you can have two little angles in between. There's the 130 degree. And as I put in these guys, 
and there's the other 30 degree now as i put in these guys i make sure there's lots of paint on by the sun so that as it goes away from the sun the paint disappears off your brush and that gives you a nice shading so you've got lots of intense whites here by the sun and fading out moving away and then just to finish off the painting i took some paints gray and added three little birds in the sky and with that this painting was finished so i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial if you did please go and take a look at my website there are literally hundreds more tutorials like this including this one which i've got on the website but in real time so it's a full two hour lesson and you can go and follow it there step by step brush stroke for brush stroke so i'll leave a link for you for that below and you can go and take a look and while you're at it please don't forget to like and subscribe and of course don't forget to tell me in the comments what you thought of this class and of course what other lessons you want me to give thank you for watching i'll see you next time